Good evening, and welcome to the 5-8, where we discuss each of the week's five most fucked up topics for eight minutes. Five topics, eight minutes, two hosts, a guest, some singing, little uh, uh, some curse words. See, yeah. I haven't done this in a while. I There's haven't done cocktails. it in a little bit. And as many cocktails as we deem necessary. Yeah. How are you? I'm really well. How are you doing, Greg Oliar? How was your time off? For the Thanksgiving holiday. It was lovely. I have to say it was very lovely. Mm. Um, I'm drinking something interesting because my wife bought this new kind of gin called Empress, which is, it's actually oh, yeah. indigo gin because it has butterfly something in it. So it's nice. deep blue. And then when you put tonic in it, it turns purple. It's oh, really that's cool. lovely. How yeah. nice. Also, it tastes good. Oh. So, mm -hmm. Well, I'm having a Fresca. Okay. I love I love Fresca, by the way. I love Fresca. I forgot about Fresca. I always forget about Fresca. Mm -hmm. And then I rediscover Fresca. I yeah. think that's, I've done that on this program before. So we're in the rediscovering Fresca phase. Okay. You know, part Maybe that'll be the title for next week's episode. Maybe. It's very refreshing. I love it. I um, love it. And did you have a good Thanksgiving? I did. I did. Uh, yeah. It was actually very relaxing. A lot of fun. Soft family. Good food. Um, yeah. It was great. And you? Yeah. Same, really easy. Like yeah, it, we easy. always have an early. We, we the last few years we end up with an early Thanksgiving because either we have invitations or part of our family has invitations somewhere else, or wants to go somewhere else. So we did an early Thanksgiving and then we had the leftovers and then another Thanksgiving and then so it just ends up being a lot of a lot of turkey. But it, it was I'm good. A, I'm in favor. I'm in I'm favor, favor too. Life. I really had a good time. So it was nice now, and relaxing and it was nice to have the time off and we missed all of you and it's great to see everybody in the comments. Um, yeah, we we, we've been checking you out there. <laughs> yeah, we did. So happy to have you back. Yeah. It's nice to be back. It's nice to be back. Now I have, I, I do have, I have a little show and tell. Um, oh, okay. I remember today is December 1st, which is the first day of Advent. Yes. And my wife last year bought me this <gasps> That's Advent right. calendar. The greatest advent calendar of all time. The greatest of all time. Nakatomi Plaza. And the way this works is Hans Gruber falls off the tower. That's and right. And every day of advent, he gets a little bit lower. That's right. This is the Die Hard. It's the Die Hard. Uh, just for yeah. those of you who don't know what any of those references are, it's it's the big scene in Die Hard, the big climactic scene, which yeah. Greg and I also, I think, are you in my camp of it's the greatest Christmas movie of all time? Yeah. One I mean, I don't. I don't know if it's the greatest Christmas, but it is a Christmas movie. I mean, I, I think that's it. the argument. Is that, I yeah, think it's, it's the greatest. Great. I love I'm it. In, it's a perfect I'm all movie. in with it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it, it for me, it, it's top spot because it's now, just, it's just what I want. It is. It's, it's. <laughs> it's there's, there's not I a want. beat. There's not a beat in it that's wrong. Not, mm -hmm. a, not a word. It's just a. You ask for miracles, I give you the F B I. B -I. Um, I bring up Advent calendars. Yes. For a specific reason. Because mm. I don't know if you know this, but the, the House of Representatives released their advent calendar. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know if you knew it. So I, I we have it. We have a copy of it here. I'm just going to show everybody. There it is. It's this is the, oh, yeah. the House <laughs> advent calendar. Uh, I don't know. You know <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know, listen, I had an them. I crafted it. I sent it off, and it did. It disappeared. It disappeared. It never went to post. I did. I promise I didn't delete it. I'm like, and I didn't feel like recrafting it. But it was something in the line of, you know, uh, it's a friend of mine who said like he's the pettiest, and we actually need him to go lower. Like we know you can do it, George. <laughs> go lower. You're Mr. Petty. You got thrown out. Let us find out. Let us hear. How it is the GOP found you, recruited you. What did you see? What do you know? What do you know about Lisa Stefanik? What do you know about Matt Gates, uh, a grown ass son that he adopted? What do you know? I believe this man is Madison Cawthorn times a thousand. And I think he needs to start spilling the tea because he is the petty bitch. And let's go. Let's go. Go lower, George. <laughs> Go lower. I know you can do it. I'm rooting for you. Oh my God. Um, Let us yeah. find out. Let us Let's do the, the podcast is on the podcast is coming. Um 
This oh, is also okay. the week that that uh, you know Elon Musk kind of lost his brain a little bit. You know. Oh yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> Did he have a brain? Did he ever have a brain? That's yeah. always been my contention. He told. I don't think he has. Fuck yourself. So. Yeah. Um, on behalf of uh, of everyone here in the five A community, we want to say we welcome advertisers and any advertiser that is tired of advertising on Twitter can happily you know advertise with us. Yeah, we have a much smaller audience, but no Nazis. So you know, no Nazis, that. and no you know there is some swearing, but it's not at you. And yeah. um, and and we're just a we're, we're very loving community here and very yeah. loyal. It's a lot of we brand are. loyalty here. Mm -hmm. There is. Mm -hmm. We love it. It's um, all right. We don't want to. We don't want to keep our guests waiting too long. No, we don't. So, we want to uh, get okay. to our guests. It's time all for right. the timer. We haven't done the timer in three weeks. It's exciting. Oh God, I forgot about this part of my job completely. Hang this is on. What I, mean. I know I'm going to forget something. Hang important. on. Oh, I forgot <laughs> this to do is this. my. This is my job. All right, I got it going here. I'm doing it. All right. What do you have to say here? What did the PM know? Oh, and uh, when did he know it? Mm. You know, mm. um, which prime minister are we talking about is Bibi Netanyahu. Oh, so, uh, you know, what th this is what has been raging for the time basically that we've been off is this uh, situation, this war yeah. uh, in the Middle East, the Hamas Israel war. And, yeah. um, you know, we wanted to talk about Bibi at the top. So, uh, what are your thoughts about him, LP? I know you have thoughts. <laughs> I have so many. I've been sharing <laughs> my very singular thought about him for. Mm -hmm seven years now it, you yeah. know he has to go yeah he has to go this is i, 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 I get i get I, I don't know how to not explode around this um and because it's such a tightrope right it's always such a tightrope because the whole world is inflamed now about it but before there was just there's this loud cacophony of voices where if you brought up criticism of leadership, you know, it was the the slurs thrown at you were whoever was criticizing this man were off the charts and always wrong. He's not good for Israel. He is bad. He is bad. He's bad for the world. He's bad for democracy. He's bad for his people. As we said, I believe in a couple of the shows leading up to the break we took, it's just since October 7th, it's inconceivable that he did not know what was going to happen on October 7th. It's inconceivable. You can't have it both ways. You can't have all of the advancements in the tech and the signal intelligence and all of this stuff and be known for all of that and be sitting, you know, blind, deaf, and dumb for the biggest terror attack that's coming when everybody knew. And since then, we have learned that, yes, he was, all the authorities were warned from inside Israeli intelligence, from women that were watching and monitoring the border. They knew, they said, this is real, this is happening. They were, and the line right now is that they were dismissed, right? So I think that's maybe a convenient line to fall back on misogyny. You just don't do this unwillfully. There's, there was a willfulness to this that I think is unmistakable. I also took great, uh, and now we have reporting in the New York Times. Yeah. Look, he was close with Putin. We know yes. he was communicating with Hamas before. He's close with Putin. We know that Putin helped stage this whole thing um, and support it. We know it, these things aren't conspiratorial. This is the reporting, and it's reporting coming out uh, of and being backed up by our own intelligence community. Yeah. So it's not, and and uh, the sort of allied uh, intelligence community, so many nations. So this isn't conspiracy. This guy knew. He knew. So then you get into this, what I took umbrage of this morning as I was listening to Morning Joe, because I'm thinking, okay, we have the show. I'm listening to Morning Joe. I don't do it that much anymore, but I did. And there was David Ignatius and Caddy Kay. And Caddy Kay was saying, the conspiracy is that Netanyahu knew. It's like, no, the reporting is that Netanyahu knew. That, that there's not a conspiracy. And then she got into, well, the, or that he somehow wanted this to happen. And that's conspiratorial. Well, that's something that's an assumption, but there's plenty of evidence for it. 
I don't think it's conspiratorial to be educated on the strong man's playbook. Yeah. This is what strong men do. This is what Putin did. That's not conspiratorial anymore. It's widely confirmed that he was responsible for the apartment bombings, yeah. that the mafia that put him into power orchestrated those apartment bombings on his own people so that they he could go point to a bad guy, invent a bad guy, point to it. Chechen terrorists did this. And then, OK, we got to elect this guy because he's going to keep us safe. It, it, that BB may have been using this playbook is, yes, an assumption. We don't know. We'd have to get reporting on that. But it's not conspiratorial because historically we have example after example after example after example of men like Bibi, strong men like Bibi, who try to make themselves rulers forever, who are in a seat of power against the will of the people with the people in, from some kind of finagling, and the people are putting pressure on them to get them out. Remember, the Israelis were in the streets for months trying to get rid of this guy. Yes. Trying to get rid of this guy. He's a criminal, because he's a criminal. That's because why. Because he's a criminal. Yeah. Why does he want to stay in power? Because he doesn't want to go to jail. Does that sound familiar, everybody? Yeah. So I, I just, I, I'm just, I'm just a yet again, I'm over it. I'm over, like, are we to be educated on history? Are we to be educated? Are we to listen to reporting? Are we to believe our U.S. intelligence community? Are we to do those things? Or are we to be our own version of blind, deaf, and dumb? and allowing ourselves to be gaslit. So here we are, I'm glad we're back tonight. I just wanna remind everybody in the audience, you don't have to listen to pundits who tell you to deny reality. And I don't appreciate that coming into the discourse from that program especially, and stirring it all up and confusing people when this isn't a, there's no mystery here. In fact, we should be asking the questions. We know he knew. Is Was he somehow involved? That's the next question. We don't have the answer to that. And I would love for the reporters and journalists to be focused on getting that answer instead of calling anybody who even entertains that when there's all this evidence of it um, a conspiracist or somehow, you know, we just can't do that. Why? If ever there was a time to do that, it's now. If there was, there was a time to get rid of this guy, it's now. We're giving him aid. Yeah. And he's slaughtering people. So that's what I have to say. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's of a piece with Trump, like you said. Um, yeah. You know, he, he was in the Putin, the Kushner, uh, all of that. You know that whole conglomerate of people uh, which oppose democracy, and my my thinking about it yeah. is that this leadership on both sides, nothing's going to happen there. You know, the people of the world and most of the people that live it, there want peace. They want to be able to live together in peace. That's what most mm -hmm. of the people want. Uh, BB and the policies that he's um, fostered over his term make that impossible, and Hamas makes it impossible because their stated mission is just to kill everybody. So yeah. uh, you you cannot have peace ever as long as Hamas is there. But it's not like Netanyahu is going to, you know, compromise either. So if Netanyahu were to step down, that would be a big, um, I think, a, a, the first step towards some sort of, uh, yeah, you know, rapprochement here, which is yeah. what pretty much everybody wants, because what's what's happening now is is appalling. Um, it, it's, you know, it's appalling. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and kind of leaning in, uh, that's our timer. So I think we had a good timing <laughs> there. Um, but it does bring us into <laughs> speaking of war criminals, speaking of war uh, criminals, speaking of war criminals. Um, yeah, we had a, 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 a it's a, the warlock has finally kicked the bucket here. <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> I got a lot to say about Kissinger. Why don't you start us off? And I'm um, just going to, I just want to do the numbers. I just want to do Kissinger by the numbers. I think that um, 
I mean, there's so much to talk about. First of all, I read it first. I, you know, when I woke up in the morning, cause I had gone to bed early, I woke up and read that news and it's like, yeah, well, the day's, you know, day's already made here. You know, you don't like to gloat over the dead, but for him, we make an exception uh, because he's so terrible. Um, right off the bat, Christopher Hitchens was trending on Twitter, which I loved because Christopher Hitchens wrote that book about, you know, the trials of Henry Kissinger, which is really a, uh, you know, you don't want that guy coming after you. Hitchens, <laughs> you know, one of the great writers and the great, like, you know. Uh, so, um, and then Biden didn't really say anything for a while. And then just in case people missed what he said, um, this was his statement um, from Biden. I'll never forget the first time I met Dr. Kissinger. I was a young senator and he was secretary of state giving a briefing on the state of the world. Throughout our careers, we often disagreed and often strongly. But from that first briefing, his fierce intellect and profound strategic focus was evident. Long after retiring from government, he continued to offer his views and ideas to the most important policy discussions across multiple generations. Jill and I send our condolences to his wife, Nancy, his children, Elizabeth and David, his grandchildren, and all those who loved him. Yeah. That's just chef's kiss, you know, <laughs> especially the, all those, you know, the part where it's like he continued after retiring, he continued to go. It just, he basically is saying the guy wouldn't fucking go away. He might as well have just said that anyway. Yeah. Um, I feel well, like for, he went and worked for Russia and China. He did. He did do those he things. Did. And that's what I want to talk about is the, you know, there's you're going to talk in a minute about the old stuff, but he introduced Jared Kushner yeah. to Dimitri Symes, yeah. who was the, the head of that organization here and was kind of like maybe, you know, a spy and uh, <laughs> set up the Mayflower Hotel, um, the first foreign policy speech that Trump gave. And I think it was April or May of 2016, where he yeah. met Kislyak and all this. stuff. So the Trump Russia thing. The, the the guy that spun the top is fucking Kissinger. Yeah. That's Kissinger did that. I don't know if he did it intentionally, but he did it. He's he was the prime mover here. And uh and then the other thing, which I had forgotten and you pointed out, uh, you know. There he is in the May yellow... 10th, 2017. I mean, how did they get him in that chair? I don't know. We never we didn't see him come in the building, we didn't see anything. So if, if, in case you guys don't remember this, this was the day after Comey was fired. Remember, we had the Yuck It Up Fest with Lavrov and Kislyak in, in our press. U.S. press was not invited in, only the Russian press, uh, uh, Putin's press with all of their equipment into the Oval Office. <laughs> um, and he yucked it up with these two, you know, I don't know, these just unfuckables and uh, horrible, horrible men on the world stage. And gave them some uh, intelligence that compromised, uh, I think it was Israeli intelligence. I, it was it absolutely was like, Israeli yes, intelligence. Yes, yes. Was. Was compromising sources, but why not? Let's hand it to them. Yeah. And then next thing we knew, where the U.S. press was, was boop, they were outside the, just outside the Oval yeah. Office, or maybe inside the Oval Office, I don't know. And there's Henry Kissinger. And it was just like a magic trick. And they, here's Kissinger in this chair. And yeah. all of a sudden, we're dealing with this guy. Um so, so I just I never got past that. It jarred me on a on a on a, on a I don't know a primal level. And just All to right, be so, clear, Kissinger was not in the meeting with the Russians. He was no, just outside I, hanging out at the same day at the same time. Same day, same time, hanging out outside. No, and and, and surprised everybody. <laughs> so it was yeah. like, oh, here he is. What do you know? What do you know? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's get into his history a little bit. I just okay. want to remind people about this man. There's a lot I could say about him um, related to uh, <laughs> Nixon and Bibi Rebezo and like uh, organized crime. There's, there's, he didn't come out of nowhere. Um, and uh, that to be the, the Cheney to, you know, Nixon, it, it was his Huckleberry, so to speak. Um, but here's some things that he accomplished while, uh, both U.S. Secretary of State, he came to that later. I think he was National Security Advisor first, and then he got elevated because of the bloodshed. It was so fantastically successful. Um, we had this, the carpet bombing of Cambodia. Remember, they were this, this was all the secret war. They were trying to keep destroy the supply routes, and it kept this war secret from us until CIA cables released it later. We all found out that uh, Kissinger himself 
uh, with his policies, was responsible for killing around 150,000 civilians. Just one, one, that was just one thing. Um, oh, and then because of all that carpet bombing, uh, and the, so, so many didn't, uh, of the bombs that were dropped didn't go off. So still in Cambodia today, we have, uh, there are over 40,000 amputees in the country of only 16.6 .6 million, the highest per capita rate in the world. So still carnage going on there. Terrible. Um, he also engineered the coup that led to Pinochet. He, he made sure Pinochet was installed in Chile, um, got rid of the, he was the quote unquote, the chief architect. Um, but it was his, it was his, it was his coup. It literally, there's a cable <laughs> associated with him. With his words, it is a firm and continuing policy that Allende, who was the one they overthrew, democratically elected Allende, be overthrown by a coup. So they architected and staged a coup and put in Pinochet. And for those of you who don't know who he is, he was this horrible, horrible uh, dictator, a dictatorial regime that lasted from 1973 to 1990. Um, within the first few weeks, over 20,000 uh, intellectuals, workers, and support supporters of Allende were rounded up and tortured. Uh, his torturing was Pinochet's thing. He loved to torture, lots of torture. And then a lot of executions and another 40,000 people killed, tortured, or detained um, over the course of those years. Then he supported the Dirty War. I don't know if you guys remember the Dirty War, but this was Argentina's Dirty War. This is a lot of USSR kind of stuff. Like, uh, yes. I mean, when he does work for the Russians, this isn't, I'm not making this up, or he did. Um, and China. The question is, when did he start? I think that's the question we really need to ask about this guy. Anyway, um, that uh, dirty war led to the death or disappearances of over 30,000 people. Are we doing the math? I don't know if we're keeping track of this. Maybe you guys can it was add my understanding all that. that there, it's my understanding there'd be no math. Uh, okay, well, this is the math. Okay. Then he backed Indonesia's invasion of East Timor. He helped architect that, gave him the green light, da da da. da. All 90,000, uh, 90% of the Indonesian weapons used uh, were provided by the United States, thanks to Kissinger. He made sure that happened. This was a tw brutal 24 year occupation um, that led to 200,000 deaths. That's so, it's incredible. Oh, no, the 20, 200,000 deaths launched a 24 year occupation. Oh, my God. Um, and then he supported Pakistan's genocide. So there is a genocide in his name. Um, a lot of people call the Cambodia genocide, but that was just, just destroying supply routes. I don't think they were in there specifically to kill people. But uh, the Bangladesh, Pakistan's genocide in Bangladesh was a genocide. This was all also had to do with him. I don't think I have. It. Oh, three million. Three million people. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. That's and we have to. Future. That's how we have future. to ask. Like, you know, why are we like burning metal statues of Robert E. Lee, but fetting this fucking guy? Yeah, you I know? don't know. I mean, I think that's, that's the real question. What I said to you, I forgot to put the timer on because I'm forgetting my job. So we will we'll wrap this up real shortly. But as soon as he for you, you were like you saw his death. As soon as he died, I checked out how he was being covered because it was such a. A revealing it's like as if yeah. i had any doubt <laughs> of some of these publications um and where they're aligned i mean the daily mail was singing his praises you know um they're just outlets like that i think that when they reveal themselves so fully and then kind of had to backtrack it's like oh 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 wait a minute you know maybe people haven't forgotten the fact that this man has you know probably close to four million people dead because of him. But he was a ladies man though. Oh yeah, that's that right. That was the second heading on the New York Times was him being yeah. a fucking ladies man, which is ridiculous. It's My ridiculous, favorite but he did have the CIA working with him in quite a lot, so maybe he had some kind of maybe he sprinkled himself with some kind of scent. I don't know. <laughs> I, I wouldn't know. put it past him cuz I don't know how anybody touched that troll. Good I don't Lord. know. The Onion had the best headline, by the way, which was yes. iconic napalm rights advocate dead at 100. That's no more need be said. Um, OK, we for, did forget to make fun of Alon in these first two segments, because that was our note. Just so everybody understands, Greg's notes for tonight to me were <laughs> make fun of Alon throughout every segment. Yeah, we're supposed <laughs> which, to Which might have been something we talked about. I don't remember. Um, but 
you know, he did have, if we switch back to the, uh, the onion reminded me of that. They had an amazing thread um, that I boosted. I don't know. You probably boosted too of all of the things that Lon did in, or the revelations that came to him when he went to Israel to visit with BB. I couldn't get past the baby flap jacket. Like they put a flap jacket on him that was this big and his belly was, a, I was like, oh boy, oh boy. It That's kind of looks, baby. I mean, you said baby meaning baby size or like baby Bjorn, because it looked like he was holding one of his 11 babies. Oh, they might've had a baby there. You yeah, know, he I can't stop having those babies. Yeah. Um, so that's his one accomplishment, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, either. good Lord. Alarm. Right, we've, we've made our guest wait. So we made long. our guest wait way so, too long. Um, but we do have, uh, we have, we have a little song for everybody. We do. We do. Donald Trump is a front who is facing 90 counts, but Biden's old. He lied to the banks by astonishing amounts, but Biden's old. Donald Trump had his minions stage a coup, said that COVID-19 was no worse than the flu. He's closer to Putin than Sergei Shoigu, but Biden's old. Trump is a racist, a rapist, a misogynist, and a slob. He's a CI for the FBI, cause he's owned by the mob. He's currently estranged from his third wife. He sits on his ass during moments of strife. He'll stop all elections and he'll rule for life. Biden's old. Yay! The a great chunk. Cold. The great chunk. The yes. great chunk. <laughs> little Cole uh, Porter from our, our yeah. buddy Greg Oliar. I did not write that song. That's that's Don't Fence Me In uh, by Cole Porter. By yeah. Way, for, for people unaware. Okay. We've made him wait long enough. Uh, long enough. Our guest tonight is a writer, a speaker, an organizer, an activist, a podcaster, the voice of his generation, and also a UCLA Bruin, Victor She. Welcome Victor back. Shee! Oh, you Hi guys. You okay. Uh, oh, that song was so great. I loved it. <laughs> I thought you would like it. I thought that you would approve. Yeah. <laughs> so great to see you both. Happy Friday. And I have my, I don't have a drink, but I have a, well, I do. Have, it's vitamin water. Of course you oh, do. I love that you have vitamin It's also, water. it's colorful like mine. It's good. It yes. is. Yes, we're festive. Good orange color. But... <laughs> we're festive. We're festive. Mm. So you've had you've had kind of a busy week. You 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 took the red eye. You're back. You're back in uh, on the west coast now. But um, tell everybody where you were and what were you up to because uh, we want to hear some details too. Yeah. Yeah. So I took a red eye on Tuesday night to uh, first it was Fort Lauderdale. So I went from L.A. to Fort Lauderdale, then to uh, D.C. And then uh, two hours after I landed, I was um, I was privileged and, and honored to um, get to go to the White House for their first ever, um, I guess they call it a digital content creator holiday party. And so um, it was a bunch of like your like people on Twitter and all of our social media were at the White House. And um, we just had a great time celebrating the holidays and they had great decorations. That was my first time um, ever going there for a holiday party and it was just so surreal um and the food was amazing they had shrimp crab and lamb and it was it was a great time and i saw some um friends we were chatting i saw ag there um mother she row i saw jen taub um and it was a great time and and i flew out yesterday at 4 p.m eastern back to fort lauderdale first and then lax and now i'm <laughs> here with you guys yay wait so you took the red eye and you had to do a layover in Fort Lauderdale? Yes. Oh, that's that's <laughs> awful. The, that's there's awful. nothing worse than a red eye where you have to like wake up and change planes. That's the yes. worst Imagine thing. if there was McDo cold McDonald's waiting for you, but there wasn't. It was <laughs> a lovely true. holiday party. That's true. There was something on the yeah. other side keeping me yeah. going. Yeah. Or, or, or horrible nightmarish uh, Christmas trees in, in, yeah. drenched in blood. And there wasn't that. Tell us about the, no. um, did you did you get to speak with the first lady? I love her. No, so I didn't get to speak with the first lady, but um, she she sort of came into the room. We were in we were in one of the reception rooms and uh, we were all in there and, and she brought out um, 
the the kitten um willow oh, yeah. and it was adorable and 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 at one point she was she was talking through willow and it was adorable. It, it was it was so cute and um you know she's so nice and um and so kind and loving just such an upgrade from the best first lady yeah okay best. good yeah, yeah. all right yeah. Well, happy um, holidays to you, Victor. Happy holidays, you guys. It's yes. Lovely. I'm so glad that you're acknowledged for all of your. You are working hard. You continue to work hard, um, even though it's. I know for you, you feel like you're just doing your thing and being who you are. It's a, it's a lot of work and a lot of effort to keep the communication going, to keep your voice out there, to stay in front of the issues with the voice of your generation. Um, or one of the voices, I'm not saying you're the voice of your job, but, you know, to be there, right? And absorbing all of the information, absorbing all of the news, absorbing the content, and then turning it around and making sure you're putting something valuable out there. So we what see all your it? effort and we appreciate it so much. Tell us, I think since the last, it's been a few months since we were together yeah. and a lot has happened. And then we were off for a little bit, but we really, I know our audience values this and we value this. We want to hear what your, what you have to say about where your generation is, especially on college campuses. It feels like college campuses right now, that's a, a very a, a hot sort of inflamed part of our, our culture and our discourse and our society right now. And I'd love to hear your take on what is your campus like? What is your campus life like? What have you seen that might be different? Um, wh what are the thoughts? What is the environment around? Um, because we have, you know, uh, hearing stories about, you know, Jewish students hiding and having to, you know, be scared. I have a friend whose daughter had to come back from school because she was getting threatened. And so I just would love to hear what you have to say. We'd all love to hear what you have to say about your campus and, uh, what you're hearing from other students about their campuses. Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you so much for those kind words. And luckily I'm not the only one um, in my generation who's speaking out. So there's right. a whole army of us. So it's, it's um, I'm in, I'm in good company, but um, yeah, you're exactly right. Right now is a very, very fraught time on college campuses. I um, at UCLA, there is a good amount of both Jewish and um, Muslim students here. Um, and they're both scared. Um, they're both mm -hmm. scared in terms of what their future looks like. They're both scared in terms of their present present, and they can't live normally. And, and it sucks. And, and it's something that is happening all throughout college campuses. Like you said, I have friends uh, who go to Columbia, who uh, I know the anti-Semitism there is really, really bad. I have friends at Cornell. Um, I know this anti-Semitism there is really bad. I have friends um, currently attending uh, U University of Chicago and uh, some Muslim friends there who tell me that the Islamophobia is also uh, getting out of hand. And it's just all across the country, the, the combination of both anti-Semitism anti-Semitism and Islamophobia um, has risen to, I think, levels we've never seen before, at least in, in quite a while. So for a lot of students, they're on knife's edge. Um, and, you know, it, it's just, I, I think when, when we see everything going on right now, I think one of the things that concerns me the most is sort of what's happening on social media, because I think there's a lot that gets lost on social media. And, you know, I, there's a lot of young people who criticize what this administration does. Some, you know, are very, very valid. And, and, and you know, there's are, there are really intense calls for ceasefire. But I think there's a lot that gets lost on TikTok. And I was having a conversation um, with John Kirby, who is the national security uh, spokesperson for the Biden administration. And right. um, he, he, he offered some really interesting remarks about the state of sort of the Israel and um, Hamas war. And this was before the negotiation happened and before the deal was reached. But I sent it to one of my um, friends who is very, very, you know, like, I don't want to even say pro-Palestinian, but someone who is really out there calling for a ceasefire, saying that, you know, sure. um, Hamas, you know, isn't as bad as it is. And I, I sent it mm. to him and, and he listened to it and he said, wow, like, I didn't know all of that existed or I didn't, that, that isn't on my TikTok feed, that isn't on my Instagram. And, and so I think that in itself is a big problem. And I think that's part of the reason why the, we are seeing such a loud and vocal response, but also the fact that it's just personal. I mean, there's a lot of, I think, sentiment about this that goes deeper than we all believe in. And I think when I approach conversations with my friends, it's just, you know, I'm not an expert. I'm here to listen to what you have to say. And, you know, 
tell me what you're, what's on your mind. And I think the more we can create spaces like those and give people the opportunity to, sh to share their story, I think we start to see that this is a really complex issue. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, people are informed by both their lived experiences, but also what they consume online. And, and some of what they consume online just simply is not aligned with sort of what's, what the reality is and what yeah. the administration is pushing for. And so um, I think, we, like you said at the beginning, you know, we just have, keep have to communicating and that's the, the, that's sort of, we have to keep on doing. It's it's something that has to be constant and you can't just do it once and expect that people are going to hear from it. You have to be on different outlets and different platforms really pushing this message, message out there. But I think the more we can get those facts out there, the more people can see, you know, there is more to this than just meets the eye and, you know, calling for a ceasefire. Well, it may sound appealing. There's a lot to it that, you know, I, I think is, is a little bit more difficult than, than it seems. Yeah. Um, I want to ask about the perceptions of Biden because, you know, in the initial uh, aftermath of the attacks and then, you know, once Israel went in there, there was uh, the polling from Gen Z. He, he plummeted. Uh, I don't think polls a year before an election matter that much. But uh, in my view, Biden went to Israel. And I think that the, the result of that is that he um, made everybody wait and catch their breath before they did anything. Um, it's my belief that Biden and Secretary Blinken especially have been instrumental in trying to uh, curb Netanyahu's perhaps more violent tendencies, not always successfully, but I think that that's what they're trying to do. I think it's pretty clear that that's what they're trying to do. I think the 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 the, the pause, whatever we want to call it, that happened where the hostages came out was very much uh, a Biden Blinken uh, result or outcome. Um, is that landing with people? Do people realize that what our president's doing and that he isn't actually the president of Israel uh, yeah. or the prime minister of Israel? He's our president trying to do his best to influence policy there. Or is it just, you know, uh, are you worried is my is my question. <laughs> I think the deal certainly helps. I think I think now that we have a concrete deal and you know, I know it ended yesterday, but the fact that we did have a deal where we saw hostages coming out and we saw aid going into Gaza, I think that definitely helped. But, you know, the, I think the perception obviously trumps the reality. You know, there was that one photo of uh, Biden hugging Netanyahu that went viral. And, and I think a lot of my friends who are on college campuses, especially in the Muslim community, were like, this is not good. And, you know, saying I, I don't I agree with you, Steph, your, your intro. I'm not a big fan of Netanyahu. I think he's a detestable person. What he's yeah. doing with the decisions are, are, I think, should be condemned on all levels. But I think, you know, so much of negotiation and so much of diplomacy are just things that, you know, get lost in the, the social media landscape. People don't really have that patience to wait, you know, what, what was it, a month, more than a month for these talks to happen. But we know if it weren't for President Biden and these sustained and persistent negotiations, we probably wouldn't have reached this point. And so I, I think I think that's important to stress that negotiation diplomacy it happens behind closed doors. Sometimes you can't say things in public that might ruin it. Right. So um, as we saw, the Biden administration, I think, has been really disciplined when it comes to what it says to the public, making sure it doesn't piss off Netanyahu so that he leaves the table or that Hamas leaves the table. Um, and so I think there, there's some I, I think the, the end result is, is sort of the, the, the culmination of a lot of um, the efforts that, that were happening by this administration. But I. Oh. Oh, no. He froze. Oh, Victor, we lost you. Okay. Let's see if he comes back. Let's see if he comes back. I mean, he's going to come back eventually. Yeah, he he'll come back. He might have to oh, log back. And log back God, on. that was good. Uh, okay, so it's still dicey out there. I think we yeah. knew that. That's what we'll I'm put, getting. We'll put him back on when he's back on. I don't want to okay. I don't want to leave his him frozen on the screen. Yeah, I'm okay. Really, yeah. <laughs> um, um, but that was, that's him I think it's one of these things where, you know, with regards Biden, we have to, you know, people have to be smart and kind of more nuanced. Like what he flies to Israel after this enormous terrorist attack, what's he supposed to do? Tell Netanyahu to fuck off, like punch him in the face. Like, no, of course, he's going to embrace him and, and do all those things. Just like he embraced the families of the hostages which Netanyahu did not do because he's too much. A, he knew that he's not welcome in that, in that thing, in that setting uh, and didn't want to be humiliated. Yeah. So Biden, Biden did what Netanyahu couldn't do for his own people. I think that's, you know, 
that's an important. Yeah, he did. I mean, look, it was again, it's it was as you pointed out before we took our break, it was just almost immediately lost that what was it? Was it 2000, 1700 people? Um, murdered, kidnapped, tortured, yeah, the, like. These, these were thousands of people. Like it wasn't like a little, it wasn't, I think if anything, uh, it just, again, you'll never convince me that BB didn't know this was going to happen. He knew it was going to happen. Right, right. There's Victor. He's back. But, he's uh, back. My he's computer, some, somehow my Chrome says I'm out of space, which was very, uh -oh. I'm, I'm, I'm uh -oh. on my <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about well, that. We were, just, we were just wrapping around sort of saying, you know, that, that I was coming to the point of like what also seems to still, we know it got lost was this, that on, that Biden was going and hugging the leader of a nation that just had the largest slaughter of its citizens. Yeah. Um, and uh, the largest slaughter of Jews since the Holocaust, it was like right. 1700 people slaughtered, you know, kidnapped, tortured in a day in, uh, on, on one day through this operation. And yeah. I was kind of coming back around to like he had to have known, you know, BB knew. I don't know that he knew how horrendous it's almost like people can't quite wrap their minds around when if you were going to hear about something like this, like what it's actually going to be like, like what what that means that you're going right. to have a terror attack, especially if you're constantly getting terror attacks. Um, but I don't know. That's that's I, I I just think that these moments in time that we're following a timeline of cause and effect and reaction and appropriate behavior and appropriate diplomacy have all gotten thrown into a lump of all one like people forgetting yeah. that there was you know this was october 7th wasn't just a, a, no, a nothing day yeah um historically it wasn't just another day in the calendar which is another reason by the way that bb has failed spectacularly yeah he squandered the goodwill of the people it, it, yeah you know and for what oh we lost and, him again for what purpose? All right. He's waving. Okay. He's back. There we go. There we go. There we go. Like, oh, he's back. Okay. okay. I was like, why are there two things? There? <laughs> okay, I, I see now. I, I right, see so how it is. Let's, let's pivot, but stay on this a little bit in terms of, I just want to circle back around to what you had said of like, you actually spoke with someone and said, no, that's actually, there's all these things. And, and th that student was surprised because I, that's not what I, that's not the information I'm getting. Right. So this sort of how we've all become siloed and we knew we were siloed in our information, but it seems to be um, hitting your generation in a, in a big way right now, because you were, you are the voting block that if you vote for this voting block votes, that's the first thing. Uh, is to show up to vote. And Roe certainly had everybody very motivated to show up to vote. Um, that was a big motivator. Um, then you get, it, it just seems like you're very, you're very much a population that's probably targeted by the bad guys yeah, yeah. and it's fed a lot of disinformation and siloed on purpose and everything that we watched you know, happen in 2016 and 2020 again. And now it's happening, but the, it, feels like there's a laser focus on on college campuses and college voters, Absolutely. young voters, the youth vote. And it's not just even online. It's, you know, in states like Texas now, there are bills currently pending where, you know, if it gets passed, it could eliminate all college campus drop boxes and election centers. So it's, yeah. there is a sustained effort to get us not to vote and to create this level of noise and, and chaos. I don't know if you guys heard, but I, I, I was referencing this poll that I saw last week by YouGov, um, and it was a uh, 12,000 respondents. And um, it showed that actually the majority of Gen Zers actually support this administration's policies on Israel and Hamas, which is more than any other generation, which I found really interesting. And, you know, it just, I, you know, I don't know how much to trust polls, but it, it, it was the first poll that had that number that high. Um, and then the following weekend, NBC released its poll showing only three in 10 young people support this. But I, I think it's just, we don't really quite know, but my hunch is that the, the people who are out there really making their voices are the most vocal and the most active, I don't think are representative of all Gen Zers. And, and I, I had this conversation with um, Olivia Juliana, who is a great um, 
friend and political strategist and she took yeah. out the states and one of the things that she says which i thought was really interesting was you know we have to ask ourselves are these even the young voters who would have even voted in any election are these the young right. voters typically are, are these the just voters? the loudest, but are they the people who actually participate because the people who are in rural texas or the people who are in my home state illinois where i'm from the suburbs like i don't hear this happening from that you know they're still turning out there and, and you look at what's hap what happened in the local elections in 2023 or in November, and you saw young people really turn out in Virginia, in other states like Ohio for the ballot proposition. And so I think, you know, there is still this level of hunger. That doesn't mean that we don't put in the work. We still have to work hard and, and get that information across. But, um, you know, I, I'm still optimistic that at the end of the day, Gen Z sees the threat between what Republicans have to offer and what Democrats have to offer. And the more we can stress, I think, not just the importance of electing Biden, but also Democrats down the ballot, um, the more it'll it'll get young people to think like, yeah, it is worth voting. Good. I, I just want you guys to vote. Like, yeah. however, it's this is your world to inherit. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, so I, I'm, you know, I'm I at this point, you know, I don't know. I'm, we're still young enough, Greg and I, but certainly we're getting up there. And, you know, at a certain point, we should be along for your ride. You know, you've been along. We dragged you along for our ride and um, happy to have the youth take over and excited. I, I, I think there's a lot um, that our young voters have to offer in terms of vision and ideas. And I'm, in, I'm listening. I'm interested and I'm listening. We're in this together, truly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think we... We have one more. We have one more question. We have. Oh, one more question in this block. Oh. Okay. Yeah. No, this is important because LB and I did not watch the Newsom. Uh, oh no. Status debate <laughs> because my level of masochism doesn't run that that deep. It's, it even it has limits. Oh. And um. So, but you watched it, uh, and it feels like based on what I've seen, um that uh, Newsom did a pretty good job. So tell us what, what were your impressions of it? So I don't know if it, if I saw this differently because I was 30,000 feet up in the air yesterday during uh, this debate, but I, I was watching this in this like tiny little TV screen on my uh, flight. And um, I, you know, it, it was, it was in terms of just civility and, and in terms of chaos. I mean, it was so chaotic and, and you had DeSantis trying to cut off Newsom. You had, Hannity targeting Newsom and giving uh, DeSantis softball questions, but wait, who uh, was moderating? Sean Hannity. Sean Hannity was moderating. Oh, which what is this? What happened? I'm so happy I missed it. <laughs> he, oh, no. he started off by saying, "We want to keep this conversation civil and fair and factual," and he lost me there. I mean, it was so bad, and I, I in terms of his moderation skills, but um, I really loved. Uh, you know, I, I was already impressed with Gavin Newsom's just rhetorical abilities before, but. Seeing him on that debate stage take on two was really something else. And um, he didn't budge. He didn't, you know, let the narrative take over. At one point, Sean Handy asked him, well, you know, um, what will you say about Biden's age? And he had the perfect response. You know, he acknowledged that Biden was old, but he said, I take Biden over uh, DeSantis any day of the any day of the week. You know, I take him if he's 100 years old. And he fo focused and pivoted to uh, the, the record of this administration. And it was just really strong. And he looked the you know, people directly in the eye and said, look, if Ron DeSantis won't tell you, let me speak directly to you. And it was just, you know, I love that. I feel like Democrats have so many talented communicators and to have someone like Gavin Newsom on Fox taking on the right wing is uh, so brilliant. And I learned too, after the debate, I, I looked, I, I did sort of a deep dive into Gavin Newsom. He is an addict uh, of Fox News. He watches apparently Fox every single night. Um, Sean Hannity, Laura Ingram, well, that that world, and so I there's guess something to that. Know your know your know adversary, your, and, right? Yeah, 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 there's something to that. And he was just really good, and and very just he pierced right through the narratives that they try to strike. So I was I was I really liked it, but you know I I don't know what purpose it served other than political entertainment. And uh, if you have time to kill, it's good entertainment. <laughs> oh my, okay. Well, but if people are watching it on Fox News and they and they are open minded enough to you know, actually yeah. listen. Yeah. Uh, right. which probably they're not, but you never know. You know, all, it, I think it, they it, are. I think I, I just don't. Ron DeSantis is such a goober. He's just, he, he's, he's not going to be, he's not going to be, he's the guy. not going to be, be so I, if it's not Trump, it's going to be. Nikki Haley. It's, I, it's just, yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's a ridiculous 
I don't know. Can I, can I, I ask you guys a question? What do you guys think yeah. of the prospect? Because I agree. I don't think it's going to be DeSantis, but what if it's Nikki Haley? And she seems like, you know, she, the Koch brothers endorsed her this week. So that's a big pile of money. It's a problem. But, yeah. It's more dangerous because I, yeah. I always thought, you know, going back three, four years, that if, if they had jettisoned Trump at, at the first impeachment yeah. and just had Pence, you know, play out the string there, and rallied around Liz Cheney and Liz Cheney was running now with the entire Republican party behind her. Yeah. That's, that's terrifying because she probably like enough people would be like, okay, it's an old white guy and it's a, you know, a 55 year old wo uh, woman. Like we we're, we're, we want to prove that we're not misogynist. Well, like it, that's dangerous. I feel like Nikki Haley isn't quite as strong. She's very milk toast, and she has the fucking Trump stink around her. She's, you know, why did you right, why did you quit that, after the day after Khashoggi died, Nikki Haley? That's yeah, the debate. We'll have to. That's Boom. the debate. We'd have to keep uh, asking her that, but I think, um, I think she could. I think she could woo a lot of voters. I do. Mm -hmm. She's way more dangerous than DeSantis. Yeah. yeah. Way. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. 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 But All right. Let's let's the Republicans also hate women, so they probably won't vote for her. No, but they like their own. Oh. Yeah. I can't. We're not gonna talk. Guys, we don't have time to talk about the the what moms for liberty, whatever. <laughs> and the MILFs husband. for liberty. It's MILFs for liberty. Sorry. Oh my <laughs> God. But all right. I can't. That just I went from Nikki Haley there in a nanosecond. <laughs> but I think because it was Florida too, the Florida uh chapter, the guy, whatever. Holy cap. You don't know what I'm like talking about, just look it up. Just, or, or don't. Or just don't, These or women, just don't. Those women they will support for, they will vote for because those women will just keep uh elevating and enabling, you know, these horrible, horrible, yeah. horrible men. Oh, good Lord. All right, let's go to our next topic. I'm going to put okay. on the timer. Victor, right. we're putting on the timer now. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, wait, I have to read something here. I got I to gotta prepare. Sorry. Okay. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, so it's called Arsenal. And, okay, so uh, our friend Nina Burley tweeted this article out uh, earlier today. And then Billy Ray retweeted it um, mm -hmm. and commented on it. And this is something that happened in, in October of last year that I had forgotten about or had eluded my attention in the fire hose of shit that comes out of everything. So the, the, the headline, um, and this is uh, Kyle Cheney writing in, in Politico oath keeper describes groups, large weapons catch ahead of January 6th. And then the subtitle, the group's founder, Stuart Rhodes and several regional leaders are charged with conspiring to disrupt the transfer of power and preparing for violence to enforce their will. The article begins, a member of the Oath Keepers who traveled with the group to Washington, D.C. ahead of the January 6th riot described a massive stockpile of firearms and other weaponry that allies had stashed in an Arlington, Virginia hotel. Uh, quote, I had not seen that many weapons in one location since I was in the military, recalled Terry Cummings, a Florida resident who said he joined the Oath Keepers in 2020 amid concerns about left-wing violence in Portland and joined the group's leaders' private chats in advance of their trip to D.C. Prosecutors have described that arsenal, known as a Quick Reaction Force, or QRF, as a key element of the Oath Keeper leaders' plot to subvert the 2020 election and help forcibly keep then-President Donald Trump in power. The group's founder, Stuart Rhodes, and several regional leaders are charged with conspiring to disrupt the transfer power and preparing for violence to enforce their will. And then Billy Ray, uh, who's been on this show before. Yeah, writer, uh, director. Yes. Uh, yeah. Tweeted out, retweeted it and said, uh, yes, the weapons were waiting in a motel room. The plan was for Ohio Oath Keepers to take the Capitol. Then Trump would deputize the Virginia Oath Keepers to hold the Capitol from police and army while he seized power they just had to cross the Potomac. Yeah. Ooh, that last line gave me a little chill. 
That it's, gave me a little chill yeah. too. So, yeah. you know, and just for everybody, just to remind, so Billy had a, he was going to do a movie. He had written and was going to direct a film. I probably similar to the Comey rule film that he did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was uh, in a couple chapters. I'm not quite sure. I wasn't a part of it. Um, but, uh, it, he, I think he had it set up at Showtime, which is where he did the other one. And then it got um, not advanced <laughs> forward. Showtime decided not to. And I think he was trying to set it up somewhere else. He may have. I don't know that we had the strike for months and months. So I'm not sure where that project is. But I can say that I do know this about Billy. He would never put a tweet out there if it wasn't something that he hadn't sourced to the nines. Um, from his own work um, and he works with journalists and he works with uh, folks from the intelligence community, he works with all these people when he's putting together his films. So for him to say, this was the plan that Trump, I had not heard yeah. that Trump was going to deputize the Oath Keepers. Maybe that reporting had been out there and that's what Billy was like remembering that reporting. And But I hadn't heard that before. I, we'll have to check with him. Um, that's so, chilling, chilling. Yeah. I can see the Oath Keepers having this whole thing and Donald having hands off and be like, well, I don't know. Right. Even though he got rid of the magtrometers and all that stuff, but, um, that there was a, a deputization plan. The president was going to, Ooh. And it, that's very interesting in light of the news today. I don't know if you guys saw it right before we came on air of, uh, Trump lost his ability to say that he can't be sued yes. in a court. Um, in a civil case uh, against for January 6th because he was using presidential powers. So the court came back and said, yeah, you were doing extracurricular shit. So, and you can be sued. Is that Chutkin? That. Is that Judge Chutkin? Is it the same thing? Cause I get the- I'm the not thing. sure. No, 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 Chuck Chutkin made a decision right before we- went I know, out. I have the quote. I have the quote, it's fantastic. <laughs> okay, what's that? It for later? You wanna hear it now? You yeah, hear it now? let's hear it now. Okay. Uh, Defendant's four-year service as commander-in-chief did not bestow on him the divine right of kings to evade the criminal accountability that governs his fellow citizens. Ooh. Wow. That's fucking good, man. That, yeah. That's good shit. Um, but getting back to the matter at hand, the arsenal that was a, across the Potomac in Arlington, Virginia, which is not far from D.C., um, and is where the cemetery is, which is uh, built on land taken from Robert E. Lee's family after the Civil War. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, Victor, what are your thoughts about this? Yeah, what, what comes <laughs> up to you? What, what you know? Tell us. What, what do you think? I mean, it's chilling. I also, I also don't. I didn't know that they had such a big stockpile of uh, weapons, and I wonder how do they get them there. <laughs> um, but I am. Uh, I, you know, I guess it, it doesn't surprise me, given the fact that I mean, uh, well, actually, no. I, it does surprise me because it's Trump and he, deputizing the Oath Keepers seems really just outlandish and, and so revolting. But I guess for Trump, anything's possible. And it, it's also scary to me that this could be the new reality in 2024 if he's elected once again. Just imagine how he would use Oath Keepers and, and QAnon and, and all of the right wing groups out there to his benefit. We know that he's going to fill up the government with right-wing lawyers. Um, there's this huge project called Project 2025 that is mm -hmm. frightening if anyone hasn't read it yet. And so I, knowing that, you know, I guess it, it just raises the alarm bells for what might happen if he's reelected in 2024. And if he loses, I wonder if there's something that he might do with Oath Keepers um, to cast out and bestow violence on um, election, on the election results and election counting. I don't know that that's frightening to me. Yeah, no, it's yeah. it's a it it is, um, and I think that you know generally for the last seven eight years, my whole mo with all stuff is to be like, let's go back and review what we know. Let's go back and repeat what we've heard, because yeah. the news goes so fast and so rapid fire that we forget things. We everybody does right, and sometimes uh, you know a piece of news is in a different section of the newspaper or it's reported by a different outlet, and it's hard to put everything together. So again. Let us pause and say there was a fucking arsenal of weapons that they were going to use to possibly take or maybe even blow up, for all we know, the fucking capital. This is what Guy Fox was trying to do in Britain. And that's why they have Guy Fox Day, right? And um, yeah, what happened to Guy Fox is that they fucking hung him, hanged him 
because he was a fucking traitor. So that's it. I'm just saying that the similarities now with the with the the huge uh, arsenal of weapons that wind up not getting used is very similar to that. And I think I wrote a column called American Guy Foxes like two years ago. Pretty sure. Can't remember all the stuff, but I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah. Uh, they wanted to kill Mike Pence. I was talking to yeah. a, a guy I a guy at work with and who's young, you know, he's your age, Victor. And, and uh, he was like, well, you know, what are the parties? I'm like, who's Trump's going to VP? Will it be the same guy? I'm like, well, the Trump can't pick the same guy because he tried to have him killed. And usually that guy wouldn't, you know, maybe maybe accept it. Uh, although in Mike Pence's case, he probably would because he's a pathetic loser. But I don't know. I just like, can you believe we're talking about the United States of America? Like, this is just it's still just nuts. Um, I think I don't think he should be on a ballot. He orchestrated a, a coup. I, I, there's no. And I think some states will have him on. I mean, it's just, I don't know. I think it, it's, it feels like, Victor, it feels like we're kind of, um, uh, what do I want to say? What's the word I'm looking for? You know, when you have like a Frankenstein, I guess I'll just use Frankenstein, but it feels like a chimera. It feels like we're just sort of chimering our way in as a nation into this next election. It just like, it's sort of like this monstrous thing, uh, of what the party is, who they're going to put up for, you know, they're going to, they're going to nominate this guy, even if he's yeah. in prison and we're going to have all these conversations again about unprecedented. And it's just yeah. bizarre. I just can't believe we're living. I still can't believe we're living through this. It's so outrageously strange. It People is. are going to be writing about Eugene V. Debs for God's sakes. <laughs> who ran from for president from prison. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. No, it, it is so strange. And I, it's just, there's so much shit that also comes out of his, I mean, truth social, like the other night, he, <laughs> over the span of one night, he called for MSNBC, for the government to like dismantle MSNBC because it was owned by the government. And he called for, you know, Obamacare to be repealed like multiple times. I mean, this is, it's, I know we always say, you know, this is not normal stuff. This is unprecedented, but it's like, this is what Trump would do second term. And he knows how government will work. And he's telling us yeah. what he would do. And we can't yeah. pretend like what he says, he's not going to do. We know what he he's says. Gonna he's going to do it. He's going to do it. And they're going to do it. They're going to do everything they say they're going to do. Yeah. Everything, yeah. And it's like, we, we can't just look at that as, oh, another Trump moment of, you know, him being crazy. No, he, this, he's intentional about this stuff. Yeah. He, um, and that's, we can't just gl gloss over that. And no. it can't be a thing also where we're going to get saved by, some bullshit thing like, oh, he's not going to be on the ballot because the 14th Amendment, right. he doesn't give a shit. Right. Well, he, he's going to nominate Mike Flynn to be this, but the Senate won't appoint who he yeah. doesn't fucking care. He's just going to order him to go do his thing. And that's no, he it. doesn't. They, it's That's the whole thing. I yeah. remember when I was talking to somebody like, well, no, there's remember when um, it was like, well, we've got subpoena power now. We're going to subpoena. And yeah. it, oh, remember, yeah. Who was that? It was Adam. No, it was. Uh, the guy that looks like Adam Kinzinger, but he's not. He's a Dem, and he's still in whatever his name is. Okay, and he's got Rasmus? the kids. No, not no, Rasmus. no, 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 no. Uh, uh, he's young, and uh, I can't remember his name. I can't remember. This is what's happening to me. Uh, I'm getting old. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but the, yeah. So he was like, "Oh, we have subpoena power," and I, I remember I was talking to someone. I was like, and they're like, "Oh, we have subpoena power." They're repeating. It. I'm like. They're just, they're not going to show up for a subpoena. What are you talking about? Oh, someone said Swalwell. Yeah, a Swalwell. A oh, Swalwell. Yeah. And, yeah, Swalwell. And I'm like, they're not going to do this. Who's going to, they're going to go, okay, make me. And then who's going to make them? No right. one's going to make them. Right. What, are they, what is anybody, why, what do people think is going on? That was like six years ago, five years ago. They're not going to, they're even worse now. They're not going to follow any rules. That's the rule. There's one rule now. And the one rule is they're not following any rules. Steve Bannon was convicted. Yeah. And they were like, oh, we're not going to send him to jail. We're just yeah. won't. We're just going to wait on that. What the and fuck? Even if, it, even if they crazy. were to send him, okay, you got to go to jail, Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon was like, yeah, I'm not showing up. Right. Yeah. Right. What are you gonna do? Like, yeah, yeah. I'm, like, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I'm not doing that. It's crazy. That's their, um, that's their, that should be the t shirt. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Okay, yeah. quickly. Yeah. Nothing. Hmm. Okay, gal. Hi, gal. Um, he 
Trump was going to deputize them under posse comitatus and negotiate the terms, meaning the Oath Keepers. So, uh, yeah, it's bad. And they had this all, you know, planned out. And we were very lucky that Mike Pence's son and fucking Dan Quayle uh, <laughs> prevailed upon this guy to, you know, have the Holy one shit. moment of clarity in his entire fucking life. It's the worst simulation ever that we ended up with Dan Quayle again. <laughs> It really, it really Speaking is. Of simulation, right. I, I was thinking about simulation before. Yeah. Victor, if you're not aware, we LB and I have this thing where like, we feel like sometimes we're in a simulation and it, it, what, it's usually about names, like names become very similar and it freaks us yeah. out. We're like, why is that? Like, okay. Anthony Blinken is the secretary of state is literally, he's a Blinken. He's a Blinken. <laughs> and that's the <laughs> fucking thing that they've run out of ideas in the other side. And they're just throwing shit at the, uh, you know, the throwing spaghetti. Oh and uh, that's another, I forgot about that simulation example. It's time for announcements. <laughs> it is time Ooh. for announcements. Um, All right, Victor, let's start with Victor. Victor, do you have any announcements? Anything coming up? Anything exciting? Anything you want to let you people know about? Um, nothing that I can think of in the future. I did, um, I was telling you both, I, I, my most recent piece, um, in the Chicago Tribune was about, um, Biden and, and what a Gen, you know, Gen Zer might advise him in terms of how to turn out young voters. And so I wrote about that for the Chicago Tribune. Um, and if you want to tune in, I do a podcast with Joanne Banks, where it's just the two of us. And, uh, we talk about all the news of the day next week, we're going to have on Jonathan Carl talking about his book, um, which has some really juicy nuggets in there. So um, that's 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 our upcoming guest, um, and oh, I highly cool. recommend. Um, I mentioned the the John Kirby episode. That episode was particularly powerful. Um, if anyone's interested in that, um, but that's sort of everything on my horizon. Just taking a moment to just wish all of you a happy holidays and oh, a good New Year. It's I can't, I can't believe it. it's the last. Someone said it's the last first day of this year. Which is crazy of like the month, so which is yeah, it's December. It's, it's December. December. It's not yeah. even November. A little nutty. Oh. I can't believe it. I, I can't, can't believe it's it December. Even... Yeah. Okay. Amber, what, and, we will like look for all of that, and also anytime I try to boost all of your writings whenever you write. So oh. folks, you know, and Victor, if you've got something saved at the top of your X feed or Twitter feed or whatever we want to call it, um, you, I love your I love your articles. I love when you write. Yeah. So. Yeah, I just want to, you know, be the one encouraging you to do more and more and more oh, of that and you. keep sharing it with me so I can keep boosting. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, sadly, yeah. I'm an English major, so I do a lot of writing and sometimes the ideas don't come to my mind as quick as I want because I'm occupied with books. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's wonderful. That's good. Oh, oh. someone from Gen Z reads books. I'm so glad to hear this. <laughs> yeah. This doesn't happen much in this house. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So announcements on December yes. 22nd, which is yeah. a Friday. Yes. We are not going to have a show. We are going to have instead an after hours show, a holiday special. Holiday uh, the special. Program, the programming of which we have as yet to be determined. We don't know we're what gonna we're going to have a holiday special for members only. So if you want to participate in the holiday special, you have to join, which you could do. It costs like, I think, $1.99. So Ooh. that's what it costs. <laughs> and, uh, you'll be in and you'll be able to comment and have fun. And it'll be a little more loosey goosey and a lot of fun. And we may or may not, we'll probably do another after hours before that, but just put that on your calendar. Um, it'll be a fun one. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll populate the, uh, the congressional uh, advent calendar. Who else are they going to toss? Right. I don't know. Oh my gosh. I can't wait for tomorrow. I can't wait for tomorrow for our advent calendar. Yes, so we want to see you guys all there. Here we have um, True Player always on it. Yes, with the thank link you, True up Player. There. Thank you, True Player. True Player, the best moderator. The best moderator ever. Yeah. True Player Moderator Award. Um, and bring your ugly sweater. That's all I have to say. Bring your ugly I sweater. I don't have an ugly sweater. I'm going to have to buy an ugly sweater. Actually. Yeah. yeah I, I don't know. I this is, this is my ugly sweater. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I realized I have this on, and then I went to, to pick – my son up at work and I put like a blue like raincoat on and I looked like I was dressed like George Santos. So oh, no. 
I looked in the mirror. I'm like, oh my god, what, was this like I a subconscious it. thing that I did? I don't know. How great no. was it that he just like they expelled him and it's like he just left. Goodbye. <laughs> you got to get out of the building now. He just because I've uh, we've never seen an expulsion. So that's what that wow. is. You have to you you're you're off immediately. You're out. Um, they changed the he locks. Like, he's gone. He's gone. He was like. Go he on. got he got a double hand. technical. He's off the fucking floor. He's That's it. Floor. He's out. He's off the. He's That's out of the it. game. He's, Goodbye. He's eighty six. He can't come back to the bar. It's all Goodbye. over. Bye. All um, right. I don't have any other announcement. I think that's our big one. Did you have another one? I did not. All right. Well, let's move on to that last topic then. Okay. Eight minutes is on the clock. Actually, wait. I do have. I do have one. Oh, I for God's sake! I'm sorry. Always. I'm writing this thing about the the new right on Prevail. Yes. And the piece that I wrote on Tuesday. I base I spent a lot of time on it. I spent all weekend Good. going down very, very dark, weird rabbit holes. Uh, so it's a good one to read. It's very interesting, um, especially. Well, I'm not. I don't want to reveal anything, but it's, you know, it's a good one. I think. And so your your part two's coming up. Part two's coming out on Tuesday. Yeah. So yeah, because it was okay. Be too, wonderful. It was going to be too long. Part two for that. Uh, all right. Clock okay. Wait. Hold on. Hold on. Oh. Hold on. Oh my I think God. that uh, I. You know. Uh, Victor, um, who said earlier, by the way, in 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 view of the um, the Biden statement on Kissinger, he only said condolences, and literally with everybody else, he says deepest condolences. Oh, if you look it up, it, it's it's wild. <laughs> I mean, there was a, it's not my, not my uh, finding. Someone on Twitter looked up Biden statements for uh, all people who have passed away, and they all say. We wish you the or we wish your family the deepest condolences, and this is just condolences. <laughs> I love it. It's you know, so it's for anybody so out there, the one or two people who actually might have loved this guy, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It, With it's condolences. Good. Um, okay, Victor. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Great to see you. Thank um, you guys. Happy Happy New Year. Happy Merry New Year. Christmas. Happy you holidays. Know, whenever you yes. celebrate uh, in December, you know. Solstice and is everybody knows where to find you. It's always in the same place. We'll put something up there at the end. Um, yeah. Do you have your, you don't have your Twitter. Your Twitter um, is at Victor. My, Shee. My, if you're not on Twitter anymore, it, I'm Victor right. Shee 2020 basically everywhere. So Victor uh, Shee 2020 threads. everywhere. All right. We're, now we're going to do our last topic and then we'll be signing off. Stick around. Here we go, guys. Okay. We, I, we have I, to I, sign him off. We have to sign him off. He's oh, you got to go? Yes, he's got to go. Yeah. He's got to go. He's got plans. He's got to, he's, got to, you know, yeah. he's right, tired. He flew across country. Anyway, he's Victor, good. thanks so much for joining us. Great no, to see you. Thank you, you guys. Well. It was great seeing you guys. Thank you. Bye, Happy holidays. Bye bye. Happy holidays. All right. I love him. Yeah. All right. All right. Go. Here we're going. We're going now. I keep pressing this button. Okay. All right. All right. So I got something else to read. Chess, chess quake. Yeah. Cheese quake. Cheesequake. Well, I guess it is Cheesequake. It's, yeah. It's Cheesequake, by the way, used to be used to be the name of a of a uh, um what do you call it when you pull off the highway and it's a rest stop. Rest stop in New Jersey. It was called Cheesequake, and now they, it's now it's called the John Bon Jovi rest stop. And I'm really annoyed by this. Okay. He's not a famous enough New Jerseyan to have a fucking rest stop. There's not that many of them. Anyway, okay. Uh, this came out. This piece that I'm reading yesterday, November 30th, the last day of November, uh, which no, Ambrose Bierce described November um, as the 11th, 12th of a weariness. That was his line. Oh, about November. Isn't that great? That's good. Yeah, that's okay. great. Uh, this came out yesterday uh, in um, yeah Washington Post. Trump co-defendant in Georgia who pleaded guilty could testify in other cases. Prosecutors in Arizona and Nevada have made overtures to Kenneth Chesbro, who helped organize pro-Trump state electors in 2020. This is by Yvonne Winget Sanchez and Amy Gardner. Here we go. Kenneth Chesbro, Cheesebro, whatever the fuck he says his name, <laughs> one of former President Donald Trump's co-defendants <laughs> in the Georgia, and he's upside down on our, on our opener, in the election, uh, Georgia election interference case, plans to meet with investigators in Arizona and Nevada where similar probes are underway, according to three individuals with knowledge of the arrangements. Chesbro, who pleaded guilty in the Georgia case to a single felony count of participating in a conspiracy to file false documents, has been charged primarily in relation to his 2020 role in organizing slates of pro-Trump state electors. These electors met and voted in seven states where Joe Biden had won the presidential election. Actions that they hoped would allow Congress to award those states electoral votes to Trump 
on January 6, 2021. As part of his pleading, Chesbro avoids prison time but must testify in the case. Separately, he has also been approached by prosecutors in Arizona and Nevada who are investigating whether the Trump slates of electors that gathered in those states broke any laws, said the individuals, all of whom spoke on the condition of anonymity, blah, blah, blah. One said that a grand jury is examining the Nevada case and that Chesbro is expected to testify in front of that panel. He plans to travel to the, that state this week. Um, but we, we, don't, place wait, Blackjack. we don't know if it's Arizona or... No, Nevada. He's going to Nevada. It's Nevada. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. Because Vegas, you know. Uh, and then it gives more and more and more and more. And then this is a key paragraph. Very important. Okay. okay. The individual said, Nevada officials have offered Chesbro a proffer agreement in which they have pledged not to charge him in exchange for truthful testimony. The person said there is no such agreement yet in Arizona and no contact at all with the office of Jack Smith, which is leading the blah, blah, blah. But Chesbro wants to cooperate in both investigations, the person said. Both. What that means, I think. More indictments. More indictments in more states. Arizona, <laughs> come on down. Nevada, come on down. Come on this down. Is, you know, how many fucking indictments does this motherfucker have to have? I can't years? wait. I don't know. However. Yeah. I think, yeah. and I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. Yeah. yeah. That the, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, the judge in New York. I want to say Erdogan. It's not Erdogan. I, I know. And Angor. Yeah. And Angor. And and Orgeron. Um, Angoron. Um, yeah. I think he's going to put him in jail because Trump has been, vi you know, he now for has the to. Civil case. For the civil case. For the civil case. For the civil case. So it's so. It's the irony so is perfect. Just, it's, it's so perfect. Only that loser. Only that loser. Yeah. Yeah. Just, because he's he's going after the people. He's he was going after the the court employees. Yeah. And as soon as the gag order was resumed, he starts going after the judge and his wife. His wife, I yeah. know. So this is bad, mm. and that's it. This guy's going to put him in jail. I can't I, wait. He's going to go to jail because of this, and it's going to be the best thing that ever happened. <laughs> be great. We're going to have a party. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I've talked enough. What are your thoughts on this? All of us. Uh, I mean, I think he's going to run away. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's my thought. I just keep coming back to that thought because it's, it's going to be a lot. If, if this thing holds as well with him being able to be, I, I said to Greg before the show, everybody, I was like, we need a, I need like a sports chart, like how they do in sports <laughs> when they're like keeping track of all the different teams and where we are in the playoffs. Um, he's, if he, if this civil liability opens up around January 6th and he can't stop it. Um, I don't know if there's another court to go to for that, to try to prevent it, but he's got lawsuits coming from January 6th. I actually think every single person that went to jail for him, on January 6th, they should sue him. They should sue him. Every single crazy QAnon, you know, Karen that was there going to jail, like uh, all the Oath Keepers, all of those people, they're only in jail because this guy said, I'm with you. Let's go. Let's do this. He incited it. He led them. He was their general and they were following him. Now, they're in jail because they committed crimes. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if you take him out of it, that shit doesn't happen. He was, it was him. So I think they should start suing him. I think if that, if the floodgates of civil lawsuits open up on Trump, by the way, can we sue Jared Kushner for deaths? And COVID? like, I don't know if that's even going to, but then I think it's like, it's too much. There's no way he can handle all of these criminal cases, right? Including these new states that might be coming in with indictments that would all be state cases. So we've got right. federal, we've no got pardons, all these no multiple pardons. states. Yeah. We've got the civil case, just the little taste you know, that we're getting with this civil case about um, Stormy Daniels and all this stuff that Alvin Bragg brought. But you have on top of that, huge civil lawsuits coming in 
from the police officers, from their families, from people who were injured, and maybe possibly people who were imprisoned. Um, yeah, he's running. Where's he going? He is not going to take his fat ass to the desert. I know you keep saying that. He's. I think he's going to China. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He's going to get a doctor to excuse him because of the bone spurs. It's pretty clear. I oh, mean, from going to prison? No. Yeah, he, he has bone not, spurs. He, he can't go to prison. I, he'll, he'll How run, dare you try to send a man with bone spurs to prison? He's going to run faster with the prospects of being financially drained to the end of his life than he is... Um, for being put in prison, but still with prison. All right, what's what, what is she saying here? I think we should be able to join. We class. should be able to join. We saw it. Too. Yeah, I was, I was trying American to drive. Yeah. Yeah. How about every single lawmaker that was there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And their families. Yeah. Join the lawsuits. Were you traumatized? Did you have to have some therapy? So he's going to go to China, you think? I do. I don't think he's going to the desert. I just don't see him in the desert. I, don't I know him. they'll put his face up on buildings in Saudi Arabia and he'll be, I mean, and there's all kinds of things he trouble he can get into, into there that he likes, but I just, I just don't see, I don't see that. I don't Swalwell see Swalwell sued him. I forgot oh, about that. I was, oh yeah. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah. That's been going on for a while. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Kellen. Uh, yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. That so yeah, I, it's, you know, it's the end. He's going to run away. His only hope is to get, when, when it becomes clear he's not going to get elected, I don't know. Maybe he still believes he can. Maybe he's got foreign leaders and intelligence services whispering in his ear, we're going to get you there, buddy. Um, I don't know. But as soon as it dawns on him that it's too big of a risk to try for the presidency in order to get rid of all of this, um, he's out of here. It would be great if he ran, but after he was on the ballot and the nominee. That would be the great, the greatest. Probably. Thing. Biden might win all 50 states. And, well, probably, maybe not Mississippi, but you know, it's possible. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't, it, we, we're going to have to do a Napoleon thing with him. You know, oh. they just they gave him a little island and they just sent him there. And that was that. He could just be at Mar a Lago, just build a fucking ugly thing around Mar a Lago. And I could just put him on a barge, put him on the garbage patch in the Pacific. <laughs> Wait, didn't, didn't putting, Colin Jost putting greens and some and some some golf stuff there on the on the garbage patch, and just let him float? <laughs> Colin Jost and Pete Davidson bought that old Staten Island ferry that they can't get rid of. Oh yeah, put him on that. Solves two problems. That's perfect for him. Yeah, That's let's perfect. send him to Staten Island. Island That's the yeah. island he needs to go to. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he's got some buddies there that's it we yeah. can't we're, we're not going to do better than that <laughs> <laughs> um thank oh. you every, everybody for watching it's great to be back we had a great time lb it's great to see you as always oh, good uh, to see you thanks for watching thanks for uh subscribing we appreciate everybody thanks for hitting the like button and sharing the episodes on whatever social medias Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg yeah. haven't destroyed. We appreciate it. Don't uh, forget to join so you can so you can um, see our Christmas special and other things. So hit that join uh, button as well and, and become a member. And Greg, you know, I did I didn't forget my saying. You know my no. saying? No, what is it? We're gonna get through this.